Want to speak real Hebrew from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at HebrewPod101.com. You've decided to study a new language. So now what? Well, you want to become fluent fast, right? Here are the top five shortcuts to learning a language. Number one, create a study schedule and set some goals. Many language learners are unorganized. Creating a schedule allows you to free up time to study consistently. Goals give you motivation and something to strive for. Number two, make it fun. If you learn how to make your study time enjoyable, chances are you'll be more inclined to study. Watch a TV show with subtitles or listen to some music. Number three, find a language partner. This is the best way to improve your conversation skills. It will help you gain fluency even faster and increase confidence when speaking. Number four, use word lists to build up a solid vocabulary. This is a great way to build up your fluency, one word at a time. Luckily, we have all the word lists you need with a range of topics from food to love. Choose whichever language you want to study and go. Number five, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Nothing helps you improve more than correcting your own errors. You're more likely to remember it correctly the next time around. Everyone makes mistakes. Don't be afraid to learn from them. There's no magical way to learn a new language overnight, but doing all of these can really help your learning process. And remember, if you're interested in getting on the fast track to fluency, sign up for your free lifetime account no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Start learning now. Want to finally start speaking in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top seven ways to practice speaking on your own with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, shadowing. Shadowing is a proven learning technique where all you do is repeat what you hear in order to practice speaking. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to start. Then, as you listen or watch, just repeat the conversations. Or even easier, read along out loud with the dialogue section. The script is right there in front of you. With our lessons, you can master entire conversations, just like that. Number two, read out loud. I just mentioned it, but reading out loud is another powerful tactic and deserves its own mention. With every lesson, you get written transcripts and translations. So as you play the lesson, read the dialogue out loud as you hear it. Why? By reading out loud, you're also practicing your speaking skills. You can do this with the lesson notes, the lesson transcript, or the dialogue tool. With the dialogue tool, you can listen to each line again and again, and repeat out loud until you master them all. Number three, speed up your reading to speed up your speaking. Being able to speak without thinking is a sign of language mastery. If you're talking to a native and can respond quickly, they'll assume that you're fairly fluent. How can you do this? When you read out loud, try increasing your speed a little bit every time. So start by reading with the dialogue tool. If you're like most learners, you'll read the first line slowly. That's because you're still getting used to the words, which is okay. Reread it. On your second try, you know most of the words and you'll read a little faster. Reread it again. On your third try, you'll be even faster at a native speaker's speed. And being able to read these phrases out loud and fast will help you speak fast. Number four, record and compare yourself with native speakers. In order to sound like a native speaker, you must imitate native speakers. So here's how. Access the voice recorder which is in the Dialogue Study tool in every lesson. Click on the microphone icon, listen to the native speaker's audio, and then record yourself. You can then compare the two recordings side by side and practice and try again and again until you perfect your pronunciation. Number five, get feedback from our Premium Plus teacher. If you're learning by yourself and don't have access to real teachers, then you can always get feedback from our Premium Plus teachers. With the My Teacher tool, you can record yourself speaking and send the audio file to the teacher. 
They'll review it and tell you what to improve and how. That's it. Number six, level up your speaking with Premium Plus assignments. With Premium Plus, you can also get assignments that cover reading, writing, listening, and even speaking from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number seven, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons on speaking and conversations, visit our lesson library and under category, choose conversation. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons that are focused on speaking. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. I'll see you next time. Bye. Today, we're going to talk about four techniques to help you stop translating in your head and instead start thinking in your target language. This will allow you to have conversations with ease, read smoothly, and better understand native speakers. These are four methods to help you think in a new language. Number one, surround yourself with your target language. This way, you'll be completely immersed in the language. Without realizing it, you'll learn pronunciation, sentence structures, grammar, and new vocabulary. Play music in the background while you're cooking, or have a radio station on while you study. Just use one of our endless podcasts available to you. These are easy to listen to in the background while doing other things. Number two, learn through observation. This is how we all learned our native languages as kids words will develop their own meanings that relate better to your target language, rather than meanings that are translated directly. Number three, speak out loud to yourself. Even if you're a little embarrassed, it forces you to listen to how you speak. It makes it much easier to spot simple grammar mistakes. Number four, practice daily. If you practice everything for only one day, you won't retain the information you learned. The brain can realistically only focus for about 30 minutes. So studying a little every day allows you to absorb better. Follow these steps and have patience. You'll soon be able to achieve your language learning goals. Just make sure to remember these four methods. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. And start learning more every day. Shalom, Ani Yana. Hi everybody, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we'll learn how to use the verb lavo. In this lesson, we will start exploring the interrogative words in Hebrew. We'll start with the most popular one, what. So imagine you want to ask your friend, what are you doing? How will you do it? You can ask, Ma ata ose? Or, ma atosa, ma ata ose, ma at osa. So let's break down this question. Ma is the simple question word for what in Hebrew. Ata, at is you. And finally, ose or osa is the singular present form of the verb la asot, which we already studied. So, all together it is ma ata ose, ma atosa. What are you doing? Ma is the most common question word. You can use it when asking someone, what is the time? Ma sha'a. Or simply asking someone, how are you? Ma nishma. The direct translation of ma nishma is what is heard. It sounds strange, but it is how you ask the question in Hebrew. It is not very formal though, so you use it mostly with friends or acquaintances. The rule is simple. Each time you want to ask a question in Hebrew, starting with what, just say ma and the rest of the sentence. For example, ma ata ohev, ma at ohevet. Do you remember what ohev, ohevet means? 
It's the romantic verb le'ehov, to love. Or just simple sentence as, what is it? Ma ze? Ma ze? So it's very simple. Just start your question with ma if you want to know what is. If you want to be more specific and ask which, you will say eze or ezo. As in, eze seret ata ohev, eze seret ata ohevet. Can you translate the sentence? Or, ezo misada ata ohev, ezo misada ata ohevet. Eze refers to a masculine subject. Seret, movie, in Hebrew is a masculine form. And misada, restaurant, is in feminine, so you ask with ezo. Now it's time for Yana's insights. In Hebrew, unlike in English, when you ask someone's name, you don't use the word what. Instead, you say, Ech korim lecha? Or, Ech korim lach? How are you called? Ech korim lecha? Ech korim lach? Ech translates as how. Korim, called, lecha, or lach is you or to you. So all together, Ech korim lecha? Ech korim lach? In this lesson, we'll learn how to use the word what in different situations in Hebrew. I know it's not always simple, but I'm sure you will remember the short rules. Next lesson, we'll talk about the word where. Do you know it already? I'll be waiting for you in the next Ivrit B'Shalosh Dakot lesson. Lehitraot ve'ada pa'am ba'a. Shalom, Ani Yana. Hi everybody, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit B'Shalosh Dakot, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we learned how to ask what questions in Hebrew. This time, we are going to ask questions using the interrogative word where. Imagine you are talking to your friend on the phone and you want to ask him where he is now. You will ask him, Efo ata? Efo at? This is the exact translation of where are you? Efo ata? Efo at? So let's break down this question. First, we had Efo, which is the basic translation of where in Hebrew. And then just the familiar you in Hebrew, ata or at. So in Hebrew, where is simply translated as efo. So for example, if you want to ask, where do you live? You will say, efo atagar, efo atgara. The interrogative word will always come first in Hebrew, just like in English. But be careful, because several variations of efo are possible in Hebrew. For example, if you want to ask, where do you come from, you will use me eifo instead of just eifo. So that question in Hebrew is me eifo ata, me eifo at. Does it sound familiar? You are absolutely right. We studied this sentence in lesson 11. Another even more common use of where to in Hebrew is le'an. If you remember, we talked about the verb linsoa in previous lessons. So as a reminder, it is used for long distance destinations or simply to indicate driving to some place and not just going to. So let's review again how to use the various forms of where in Hebrew. Efo, where, le efo, where to, and me efo, where from. Efo, as in, Efo rechov dizingof. Le efo, or lean, as in, Lean ata nosea bechufsha. Lean at nosead bechufsha. Me efo, as in, Me efo ata, Me efo at. Now it's time for Yana's insights. The word lean, as I mentioned, is more commonly used than le efo. You can use it for all cases, when talking about short distance or long distance destinations. In this lesson, we'll learn how to correctly use the interrogative Hebrew word for where, efo, but also its different variations. Now you can avoid getting lost. 
In the next lesson, we'll learn more about asking questions, this time using when in Hebrew. I'll be waiting for you in the next Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot lesson. Lehitraot ve'ad ha'pa'am ba'a. Want to speak real Hebrew from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at HebrewPod101.com. Shalom, Ani Yana. Hi everybody, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we'll learn how to ask where questions in Hebrew. This time, we're going to ask questions with the interrogative word when. Let's go. Bon atril. Imagine you want to ask when your roommate is coming back home. You will ask him, Matai ta chozer? Or, Matai et chozeret? Matai ata chozer? Matai at chozeret. So let's break down this answer. First, we had matai, which is the basic translation of when in Hebrew. Ata, at, you. Lachzor is the verb to come back. Chozer in Hebrew is the form for masculine singular. And chozeret is the same verb in the form of feminine singular. So all together it is matai ta chozer. When will you come back or return? So in Hebrew, when is generally translated as the word matai. For example, if you want to ask, when were you born? Is matai noladeta? Is in masculine form. And matai noladet? In feminine form. Also here, the question word is the first in the sentence. So let's have a look at another example. How can you say, when did you arrive? It is really simple since it is exactly the same pattern. Matai higata is in masculine form. Matai higat in feminine. First we have matai, which is when. The verb higata, higat, indicates past tense second person. By the way, the verb in the previous question for when were you born is also in past tense. Can you notice some patterns? on second-person past tense verbs in Hebrew. Regardless of time, present, future, or past, you can use matai in any tense. If you want to ask a question about duration, as in, since when have you been teaching, then you will have to say, Mi matai ta melamed? Or, Mi matai et melamedet? Direct translation of mi matai is from when. It is the same mi as Me'efo, from where? As in, me'efo ata, me'efo at. Ani me'amerika. I'm from America. Let's see how to ask until when in Hebrew. It is very easy, as you can translate it directly. It becomes ad matai. So, for example, if you want to ask a friend, until when are you going to stay here? It will be, ad matai atanishar po. Ad matai at nisheret po. You can detect easily by now which one refers to a female speaker and which one to a male. But of course, there are other ways to ask about time. You can even be more specific by asking about the year, the date, or the hour. For example, you can ask, which year did you start working? Be'ezo shana hitchalta la'avod. Be'ezo shana hitchalt la'avod. Which day is better for you? will be Be'eze yom noach lecha Be'eze yom noach lach What hour can we meet? Is Be'ezo sha'a nocha li'pagesh Here we can be used both for masculine or feminine. Now it's time for Yana's insights. Let's try to review all variations of when in Hebrew so far. Matai When Matai ta chozer מתי את חוזרת? מי מתי? Since when? מי מתי אתה מלמד? מי מתי את מלמדת? עד מתי? Until when? עד מתי אתם פתוחים? Until when are you open? For example, at a shop. Okay, so in this lesson, we learned how to correctly use the Hebrew word for when, מתי, but also its different variations. Next lesson, we'll learn more about asking questions with 
who in Hebrew. I'll give you a hint. I already introduced it to you a couple of lessons ago. I'll be waiting for you in the next Ivrit B'Shalosh Dakot lesson. Lehitraot! Shalom, Ani Yana. Hi everybody, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit B'Shalosh Dakot, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we learned how to ask when questions in Hebrew. This time, we are going to ask questions with the word who. Imagine you want to ask your friend who is his favorite singer. Here you can ask, Mi hazamar shata achi oev? Mi hazamar shata achi oevet? Mi hazamar shata achi oev? Mi hazamar shata achi oevet? So let's break down this question. First we had mi which is the basic translation of who in Hebrew. Hazamar is simply the singer. It is in the masculine form, but in the question you usually ask in masculine, since it is the default form. She'ata or she'at is that you, masculine or feminine. Hachi ohev, hachi ohevet is love the most. Remember the romantic verb le'ehov? Here you can use it too. So in Hebrew, who is mainly translated as me to ask about someone's identity. For example, if you want to ask, who are these people? You will say, mi ha'anashim ha'ele, when talking about a group of unknown persons. As in English, the interrogative word who is the first in the sentence. Me only works for people, so you can't use it to ask information about things or places. Let's see another example. Mi ba machar la mesiba? Who is coming to the party tomorrow? Mi ba machar la mesiba? Note that mi can be used for singular or plural. In Hebrew, who changes slightly depending on the direction. So for example, who is having a party tomorrow will be le mi yesh mesiba machar. Le mi yesh Mesiba machar. Le is the direction for to, towards. Do you remember what yesh means? Another example. Le mi yesh et adom. Who has a red pen? Le mi yesh et adom. In case the direction is from, you just add mimi. That translates as from whom. Mimi shamata al hamisada hazo in a masculine form or Mimi shamat al hamisada hazo in a feminine. Whom did you hear about this restaurant from? Mimi shamata al hamisada hazo. Mimi shamat al hamisada hazo. Before moving on, let's review the various forms of who in Hebrew. Mi, the simplest question word for who. Le mi translates as to whom and mi mi from whom. Now it's time for Yana's insights. If someone that you didn't expect is knocking on your door in Israel, the common question you can ask is mi ze before opening the door. This literally means who is it? Again, note that ze this is the masculine form, but as a default, you always use the masculine form in Hebrew. In this lesson, we learned how to correctly use the question word for who, which is me in Hebrew, but also its variations. Now you can easily know who is who. Next lesson will be our last of this absolute beginner series. We will deal with the last but not least common interrogative word, lama. I'll be waiting for you in the next Ivrit B'Shalosh Dakot lesson. Lehitraot ve'ad ha'pam ba'a. Shalom, Ani Yana. Hi everybody, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit B'Shalosh Dakot. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we learned how to ask who questions in Hebrew. This time, we're going to ask questions with the word why. 
Imagine your boss is giving you a call because you are not at work today. He will certainly ask you, למה אתה לא במשרד היום? Or, למה את לא במשרד היום? למה אתה לא במשרד היום? למה את לא במשרד היום? במשרד translates as at the office. It can be changed into בעבודה, at work. So let's break down this question. First we had למה, which is the basic translation of why in Hebrew. אתה, את, is simply you. לא is the negative no. במשרד is in the office. היום is today in Hebrew. למה אתה לא במשרד היום? למה את לא במשרד היום? So in Hebrew, למה is the exact translation of why, used to ask the reason for something. So for example, if your boss is asking you why you were late today, he will say, למה איחרת היום? In a masculine form. למה איחרת היום? In a feminine. Here he uses why in order to get explanations and reasons. Let's try to remember all question words we have studied so far. מה? What? מה אתה עושה? מה את עושה? איפה? Where? איפה את גר? איפה את גרה? מתי? When? מתי אתה חוזר? מתי את חוזרת? מי? Who? מי הזמר שאתה הכי אוהב? מי הזמר שאת הכי אוהבת? למה? Why? למה איחרת היום? למה איחרת היום? Now it's time for Yana's insights. A popular expression in Israel is למה לא? which means as in English why not? You can use it to accept a proposition if you agree but that you are not really keen to do or if it was not planned in advance. For example, if a friend asks you suddenly and what about going to the cinema tonight? You can answer with למה לא? Why not? Another question word for why in Hebrew is מדוע. It is considered a more literary word and used in written text or high conversation. So if you want to impress your Israeli colleagues or friends, try to use מדוע in the same way as למה. מדוע איחרת היום? מדוע איחרת היום? Why were you late today? This lesson is the last lesson of this Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot video series. But it's hopefully not the last you learn about the Hebrew language. To take your language ability to the next level, check out HebrewPod101.com, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. Lehitraot! Bye! Hi everyone, shalom, my name is Yara and this is Hebrew Weekly Words. So, uh, I actually don't know what this week's theme is, so let's find out together. This week's theme is... Hobbies. Hobbies. Tachbivim. What are your hobbies? Lesachek shachmat. To play chess. When I was in elementary school, we actually had a checkmate lesson. Chess lesson. Kshani aiti bebet sefer esodi, hayali shiur shachmat. Yeah. That didn't go very well for me. Never won. Le'esof bulim. To collect stamps. Le'esof bulim. My father had a stamp collection. Abba sheli asaf bulim. And then he gave me the uh, collection and I obviously lost it. So. Liglosh <laughs> internet To surf the net. Is that a hobby? It's more like a, a, a way of life, I'd say. You surf the net too much. אתה גולש באינטרנט יותר מדי. לשחק פוקר. To play poker. Okay, uh, the next hobby is to play poker. And this is a common hobby in Israel. I went over to a friend of mine to play poker. הלכתי לחבר שלי לשחק פוקר. I actually never played poker, I don't even know how to do that. צילום. Photography. I always wanted to take a photography class. תמיד רציתי ללכת לחוג צילום. I uh, never did that though, kind of lazy. And this is the end. So thank you so much for watching Hebrew Weekly Words. Uh, don't forget to check our site and I'll see you next week. Bye, Litraot. I feel I lost my personality.
Hi everyone, welcome to Hebrew Weekly Words. My name is Yara and today we're going to talk about the weather. The weather in Israel is mostly really hot, but for the rare occasions it's not. Uh, let's learn how to say that. Bahir, clear sky. Bahir actually means bright, but we use it to describe a sunny day uh, with no clouds. Yom Bahir. Machar yeh Bahir. Ulay naaseh picnic. Tomorrow the sky will be clear. Maybe we'll have a picnic. Geshem. Rain. Uh, when you want to say it's raining outside, you say Yored Geshem, which literally means rain is coming down. In Israel, it only rains during the winter, and even then, uh, not that much. Machar Yered Geshem. Az ulay nevatel et picnic. Tomorrow it's going to rain, so maybe we'll cancel the picnic. Aww. Lach. Humid. So lach is humid. Lachut is humidity. There is one sentence you hear in the Israeli summer all the time. That's like the, the one sentence people keep saying to each other all the time during the summer. And the sentence is, זה לא החום, זו הלחות which means it's not the heat, it's the humidity that makes the Israeli summer so horrible in an elevator conversation. It's, it's hot today, eh? Oh, it's not the heat, it's the humidity. And then everyone goes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sheleg, snow. It doesn't snow a lot in Israel. During the winter, there's one mountain who gets covered in snow. And this is where Israelis go to ski. It's pretty tiny. I don't think it matches up to European standards. But it's ours and we love it. Machar ani nosat lechermon livnot ish sheleg. Tomorrow I'm going to Mount Hermon to build a snowman. Do you want to build a snowman? Shemesh. Sun. A heat stroke in Hebrew is makat shemesh. Makat shemesh, it's something like sun punch. And that's exactly how you feel after spending a whole day on the beach, like the sun just punched you in the face. Tiru, Hashemesh yatsa. Ulay b'chol zot naaseh picnic? Look, the sun came out. Maybe we'll have the picnic after all. Okay, so that's it for today. We're talking about the weather. Thank you so much for watching. And what's the weather like in your country now? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to check out the site. See you next week. Bye. Okay. 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 <laughs> Sun punch. I'm having a picnic. Want to speak real Hebrew from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at HebrewPod101.com. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Yara, and this is Weekly Hebrew Words, uh, the series in which I share with you the magical um, treasure of Hebrew, which I possess. So uh, thank you for joining me. And this week's theme is personalities. Koes, angry. For a female, it would be koeset. Hu koes kol hazman. He's angry all the time. Poor guy. Menumas, polite. Or for a female, menumeset. He yalda menumeset meod. She's a very polite girl. Kapdan, strict. Kapdan, for a female, kapdanit. Her boss Shili, nora kapdan. My boss is really strict. Strict. Nimratz, lively. Nimratz, for a female, nimretzet. Savta Shili, day mevugeret, aval nimretzet meod. My grandmother is quite old, but she's very lively. Ragzan, short-tempered. Ragzan, for a female, ragzanit. Hachatul sheli, ragzan meod. My cat is very short-tempered. It's just for the example, though. He's a very convenient cat. Okay, this is the end. Uh, we learned about personalities today. Thank you so much for watching. If there's anything you want to learn but didn't uh, on this episode, please write us in the comments below and we'll answer you. And don't forget to check out the site. See you next week. Koes. Angry. 
Hey everyone, welcome to your monthly review. The monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, new study tools, resources, and where we show off learners like you speaking the language. That is, if you're brave enough to participate and become language learning famous. All the materials mentioned in this video are available for you right now on our website. Click the link in the description to sign up for your free lifetime account and start speaking in minutes. Okay, today's topic is why your worst days are the best days to study. So, have you ever had a day where you planned on learning language and you just couldn't go through with it? Even if learning a new language is your personal goal, something that you really want? Well, today you're going to learn one, why these bad days happen and two, why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. Let's start. Why bad days happen with language learning. When I say bad days, I don't mean when you're too busy or when life gets in the way. These things are unavoidable. I mean days when you're just not in the mood. It's a perfectly good day. The sun is shining, no bad news, but you just can't get yourself to study. You're just wasting the day. So here's why they happen. First, it's the law of diminishing returns in action. What does this mean? Think of it as eating pizza every day for five days a week. On the first day, the first two slices are great, but by the third one, you're feeling queasy. It's not as good. And by the fifth day, you're sick of pizza. That's the law of diminishing returns, when the benefits start decreasing over time. And it happens with language learning. When you first start, you learn a lot of phrases and it feels good, you're excited. But as time goes on, you don't feel like you're learning much, and this affects your mood and motivation. So you're not as excited to learn anymore. So you start having bad days. Second, bad days happen because you overthink things and ruin it for yourself. It's like dreading going to the gym. Let's say you went yesterday. You have to go again today. So you're dreading it all day long. Ah, I gotta go again. You set yourself up for a bad mood and a bad day. Third, bad days are a natural part of the cycle. Some days will be good. Most days you'll feel indifferent. Some days will be bad, but that's completely natural and anyone with long-term projects and goals feels the same. And fourth, you can't be on 100% of the time. So just like days can't always be good, you too can't always be on and ready to go all the time. Again, just a realistic and expected part of the journey. Now, let's jump into the second part why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. So, why will you get your best work done? First, it's not that bad once you start. Once you've spent 10 or 15 minutes learning a language, it's not so bad. People say the same thing about the gym. If you show up and put in a bit of time, it gets easier. Second, it's overcoming a mental barrier. What I mean is, when most of us have bad days, our brain automatically says, okay, can't be done today, stop, we're done. But if you just work through it, you don't take these bad days so seriously anymore. And that means you're more likely to stick with your language learning goal. This brings us to the next point. Third, it's your best work because working on a bad day only strengthens your habit of language learning. Remember, habits are what will help you master a language over time. If you can stick to a habit on a bad day, your habit only gets stronger and it will lead you to fluency. And finally, fourth, it just feels good to overcome something. Imagine you have a bad day, but you still put in 10 minutes of language learning. It's a real sense of achievement, and it doesn't matter if you do a 10 minute lesson or a five minute lesson. The fact that you made some progress on a bad day will give you the motivation you need to keep going. Now, speaking of lessons, here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the best of 2018 language learning cheat sheets. If you want to get access to all of our conversation cheat sheets that we sent out this year, here's your chance. Download this PDF bundle right now. Next, the brand new supermarket cheat sheet. With this cheat sheet, you'll learn must know shopping phrases and vocab for meats, vegetables, and all products that you'll find in a supermarket. And finally, the most common adjectives. If you're a beginner and don't yet know these adjectives, then this is a perfect chance to boost your vocabulary. This one minute lesson will get them stuck in your head, guaranteed. To get these free lessons and resources, just click the link in the description below. All right, everyone. 
Now we're asking you to submit a video or audio file of yourself speaking the language. If you do, you'll win three free months of access to our learning program, which includes your very own teacher. Here's the challenge for you. Yes, everyone watching this. Record a 30 second to one minute video or audio clip. Introduce yourself in the language. Share your name, where you're from, and why you're studying this language. And you'll win a three month Premium Plus subscription. To submit, click on the link in the description. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Then fill out the form, attach the audio or video file, and press submit. We may feature you in next month's episode. So a lot of learners will see you and your progress and will hopefully get inspired to improve and master the language. To submit a recording, click the link in the description and follow the instructions on the page. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to set achievable language learning goals and resolutions. In the meantime, submit your recording if you're brave. Like and share this video and leave a comment to tell us what language learning tactics you'd like us to talk about. See you next time. Bye. You probably already have language learning goals, but the real key to success is to make the right goals. In this video, I'll show you how with five tips to stop wasting your time and start learning. Hi everyone, Alicia here. In this video, I'll teach you five tips to stop procrastinating and keep your motivation for learning a new language. Some of these are study methods and some will be general ways that you can keep your study motivation up. While these tips are for studying a language, some of them are good for other things in your life too, such as new challenges or other types of goals. But before we start, don't forget to click the link in the description to get your bundle of PDF cheat sheets, including survival phrases, romantic lines, learning tips, absolutely free. Now, you probably already have some goals you're trying to achieve when it comes to your language learning progress. While achieving these goals is important, making sure you make the right goals is the real key to success. The very first tip is to set SMART goals. SMART is an acronym, meaning each letter in the word stands for another word. The earliest known reference to SMART goals was in an article written by George T. Doran for a 1981 issue of the Management Review Academic Journal. The acronym varies depending on its use, but each letter generally stands for some criterion that helps with effective goal setting. For our purposes, let's define SMART goals as follows. The S stands for specific. Your goals should target a specific area for improvement. Our natural tendency is to have a goal that's very general. If your goal isn't specific enough, you'll lack the focus and proper direction you need to achieve your goals. So S is for specific. M stands for measurable. Your goals should be quantifiable. They should be able to indicate progress in some way. You have to be able to track your progress, otherwise you won't know if you're getting any closer to your goal. As you see yourself getting closer and closer to your goal, your motivation will go up. So your goals need to be measurable. A stands for achievable. Your goals have to be achievable. Many people want to become fluent in their target language immediately. However, this goal is unrealistic. Your goals have to be achievable. If your goal is too challenging for your current level, it will only demotivate you when you aren't where you think you should be. Instead, think about what results can realistically be achieved given your level, your resources, and any constraints such as time. So make sure that your goal is actually achievable. R stands for relevant. Your goals may be specific, they may be measurable, and they may be achievable, but are they actually relevant to what you want to achieve? Don't just do a lot of things. If you're focused on improving your speaking skills in your target language, make sure that you spend your time having conversations with others. Make sure you're doing the right things so that your efforts actually bring you closer to your goal instead of just giving you more work. T stands for timely. You need to set a deadline for your goals. If you don't specify when you plan to achieve the result you've set for yourself, it's very easy to put off the task. 
You can delay it until tomorrow, the next week, or the next month, and at this rate, you'll never get things done. So your goal must have an end date. So remember, tip number one is to set SMART goals. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. So for example, a goal you could make is registering for a challenging test, a test that's a little bit beyond your current level. I hate failing, so if I register for a challenging test, I'm motivated to study because I don't want to fail. This is a good example of a SMART goal because tests are specific. There are tons of different tests focused on speaking, grammar, and comprehension. Pick a test that can measure the specific area in which you'd like to grow. Measurable. Tests are measurable. Every test measures your performance to some degree. Whether it's a total count of right and wrong answers or a simple pass or fail, every test measures your performance. Tests are achievable. There's an important detail to remember here though. Find a test that is achievable for you. If you're a beginner, then the most advanced test is probably not right for you. Find one that's meant for beginners. Then after that one, work your way up to more advanced tests in the future. Tests are relevant. Most, if not all, language tests are designed to ensure that you're capable of performing to a set standard in your target language. Lower level tests are designed to ensure that you can handle the most essential aspects of your target language. But there are tests for all levels, including higher education entry exams that could be difficult, even for native speakers. Pick the one that's right for you. And finally, tests are timely. If your test is completed in a physical location, then this one is obvious. You have to be at that spot at the set time, ready to take the test. There's no wiggle room. But even online tests will most likely have a deadline for you to complete them. The second tip to help you stop procrastinating and to keep your motivation up is to create a diary or social media account that you can update every day. This may seem simple or even unrelated to language learning, but by creating a diary in your target language, you have the chance to actually create in the language itself. Creating a diary is also a great way to practice writing in your target language. Another method is to create a social media account, which gives you the chance to connect with other people who are working toward the same goals as you. Maybe they can even give you feedback on your writing. If you're following people online who regularly share good resources, those can be really helpful for you too. It lets you find new tools that can encourage and motivate you, especially if they relate to some of your other interests, such as music or books in other languages. This is a really good way to take a few minutes every day to work towards your goal, without it even seeming like work. The third tip is to focus on understanding a specific TV show or movie. Try to watch a movie in your target language without any subtitles or try to understand your favorite TV show that's in your target language. If you don't already have a goal like this, it can be a fun way to practice. If your friends often talk about a particular TV show, it could be a good way to study and a fun way to keep your motivation up together. Plus, TV shows and movies often use the language in a way that's vastly different from the conversations provided in traditional textbooks. So you often get to hear different vocabulary choices. It's a very powerful way to learn a language and end up sounding more like a native speaker. Tip number four is to enroll in a regular language course. Register for something you have to go to or you have to participate in regularly, meaning every week or two times a week or maybe even every day. The point of this is it's something that gives you a pattern to follow. Forming a study habit will help you progress very quickly. It will make it easier for you to achieve your language learning goals. Once you form the habit, you won't even have to think about starting each time. It'll just be natural. Have something that you must take responsibility for. You'll be more motivated to continue if there are others, especially classmates or a teacher watching you progress. Look for resources inside your community. And if there are no opportunities there, look for things digitally. You can find many of our videos on YouTube, on Facebook, and of course, our entire video and audio lesson library on our website. The lessons on our website also come with assignment courses, so you can test your knowledge. The last tip is to make your goal public. Share your goal. Tell people about your goal. For example, if you want to give a business presentation in your target language this year, then tell your colleagues or your boss about it. Some people may find what you're doing interesting, and they can support you. This kind of pressure can help push people forward who have trouble motivating themselves alone. 
By telling others about your goal, you feel more accountable. Because you told somebody that you were planning on doing something, there's an underlying sense of guilt if you don't accomplish the task. You may feel that you have failed your peers in some way, even if there's no direct pressure from them. Using this technique, you can push yourself into moving forward toward your goal, especially at times when you feel the least motivated. And that brings us to the end of our five tips to stop wasting time and start learning a language. We've talked a lot about how to set goals for yourself and think about new challenges. First, I told you about creating SMART goals. Remember, SMART goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. Registering for a test is a great example of a SMART goal. Next, we talked about keeping a diary or social media account in your target language. Start doing it right now, even if you're still a beginner. Then, I suggested that you focus on understanding a specific TV show or movie. Pick something in your target language that you really love, because you may need to watch it over and over again until it all makes sense to you. And next, we talked about enrolling in a regular language course. This will give you something concrete that you must take responsibility for. Finally, make your goal public. Tell someone about your learning goals to keep you accountable for them. You're much less likely to abandon your studies if you have friends asking you about your progress. I hope that these are useful tips that you can use to reach your language learning goals. And before we go, let me remind you to download tons of free PDF lessons to learn the language the fast, fun, and easy way. Just click the link in the description. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and share it with anyone who may find it useful. Do you have any good tips that you've used to help you reach your goals? Share them in the comments. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time.